In this video, I'm discussing some of my favorite wine and champagne moments from the James Bond movies, as well as some of the James Bond books. Growing up, I was always very impressed with Mr. Bond's ability to always order the right wine and to know what champagne was best. Long before I became a wine drinker, I learned a number of important lessons from Mr. Bond, including the importance of the proper serving temperature and not to order red wine with fish. And so today, we're going to be starting out just like a normal tasting, with uh, champagne, we'll be progressing to red wines, and we're gonna be concluding with a dessert wine. Starting with champagne, in the books, Mr. Bond's character was always a huge fan of Tetanger champagne. In Casino Royale, for example, Mr. Bond is at dinner with Vesper Lind, and he orders a 1945 Tetanger. The waiter counters and says that he would recommend a 1943 Tetanger Blanc de Blanc, and said that that one was particularly outstanding. Uh, Mr. Bond then replied, so be it, and it was done. Fast forward a few years, however, to the Moonraker book. In that book, Mr. Bond admits that his passion for Tetanger was a bit of a phase, and then moves on and proceeds to order a 1946 Dom Perignon. Dom Perignon, of course, has been mentioned repeatedly, and was also something that is ordered frequently in the movies. Generally, Mr. Bond would order the champagne, uh, the Dom Perignon champagne with beluga caviar, oftentimes for room service. He certainly didn't have his expense report scrutinized the way that I do mine. In Dr. No, for example, the very first movie, Dr. No, he told Mr. Bond to be careful with that because it's a 1955 Dom Perignon, to which Mr. Bond replied, I prefer the 53. Then in Goldfinger, a couple movies later, Mr. Bond was drinking a 1953 Dom Perignon, and then someone was going to get a second bottle of the champagne, and Mr. Bond replied, my dear girl, there are some things that are not done, such as drinking a 1953 Dom Perignon above the temperature of 38 degrees Fahrenheit. That's just as bad as listening to the Beatles without earmuffs. Of course, 38 degrees Fahrenheit is much cooler than I would drink my Dom Perignon, but it was nevertheless a funny anecdote from the movie. There are also numerous other Dom Perignon vintages that have been referenced in other movies, including the 1946, the 1952, uh, 1953 and 55 we've discussed, but there were other references as well. Uh, the 1959, the 1962, and the 1964. Mr. Bond was offered the 64 at one point and again said that he much preferred the 62. Interestingly, however, in On Her Majesty's Secret Service, Mr. Bond ordered a 19... 57 Dom Perignon with caviar, and he requested that that be delivered to his room. The problem, however, is that Dom Perignon did not make a vintage in 1957. So this was a case of bad editing, unfortunately. And I believe it's the only time that people have been able to identify that there was a, a wine that didn't exist that was ordered by James Bond. Other than that, every wine he orders is an actual wine. And of course, when you're talking about champagne in the James Bond movies, you have to talk about Champagne Bollinger. Uh, Bollinger has had a relationship with James Bond since 1973 in Live and Let Die, when the champagne was first ordered for room service, again with caviar. Oftentimes, the Bollinger champagne is either the Bollinger RD, recently disgorged, or the Grand N.A., and it's been ordered numerous times in at least 15 movies since 1973. And Bollinger has actually uh, capitalized on this by coming out with some special edition bottles of their champagne, such as the, the 002 for 007, and also the 2009 Spectre edition of Bollinger. And of course, one of the all-time great scenes from James Bond involving wine was from Russia with Love. In that situation, you may recall that there was a spy named Red Grant who was trying to uh, pretend that he was on Mr. Bond's side. And he got past the initial code. Everything was apparently okay. But Mr. Bond did ha harbor some reservations about him because his accent was a little bit off and he was acting something like a cad, they described, someone with poor manners. The best example of this was when he ordered Chianti to go to with his Dover soul. Of course, Mr. Bond didn't discover this soon enough, however, and Red Grant knocked Bond unconscious. When Mr. Bond came to, he, of course, said, red wine with fish. Well, that should have told me something. To which Red Grant responded, you may know the wines, but you're the one on your knees, old man. Of course, Mr. Bond ultimately got out of that predicament, but it was uh, a rather humorous anecdote involving uh, red wine and fish. Of course, Mr. Bond, being British, was a huge fan of what he called clarets as well, or red Bordeaux wines. And so Chateau Angelus 
has made multiple appearances in recent Bond movies. In Casino Royale, for example, uh, Daniel Craig ordered the 1982 Angelus and enjoyed that during dinner on a train in one of the restaurant cars. Similarly, in Spectre, there was a 2005 Angelus, again, that was enjoyed during the restaurant car and the train. And recently, Chateau Angelus came out with a commemorative edition of their 2007 Bordeaux. And with it being the 007 at the end, they have a little gun on it, and they made 225 magnums that have a special collector's box and are individually numbered. So that's something to check out. Another right bank wine that Mr. Bond was a fan of is Chateau Cheval Blanc. And in Never Say Never Again, you may recall Mr. Bond was sent off to sort of like a, a rehab, but for people with bad nutritional habits due to all the rich foods that he was eating, and he got chastised by Q for having too many free radicals. Of course, he took a suitcase with him that was jam-packed with some of his favorites, including not only a Chateau Cheval Blanc, but 12 quail eggs, a bunch of beluga caviar, and also some faux gras. One of the most memorable wine scenes of all time was from Diamonds Are Forever. And you may recall at the end of Diamonds Are Forever that Mr. Bond was relaxing on a cruise liner when someone brought him an extravagant meal uh, along with his female guest, which he usually uh, has at the end of the movies. One of the waiters had some strong aftershave and was also pouring him a 1955 Chateau Mouton Rothschild. And when the waiter asked Mr. Bond a question, he responded by stating, the wine is quite excellent, although for such a grand meal, I'd had rather expected a claret. To which the waiter responded, of course, unfortunately, our cellar is poorly stocked with clarets. At this point, Mr. Bond knew that the waiter was a fake because any self-respecting waiter would know that Mouton Rothschild was a claret. At that point, Mr. Wint, the assassin, and his companion, Mr. Kidd, proceeded to attack Mr. Bond with some flaming skewers. So Mr. Bond ended up getting out of that one by smashing a bottle of uh, crevassier and spraying them with it, and then they became inflamed. And so in that situation, Mr. Bond's knowledge of wine actually got him out of a predicament that could have been very costly for him. And of course, Mouton Rothschild also made numerous appearances in the book, including in Moonraker, where M ordered a 1934 Mouton, and then there were 1947 bottles that Mouton Rothschild opened in both Goldfinger and on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Concluding then with a dessert wine, Olorosa Sherry. This again is from Diamonds Are Forever. Once again, Mr. Bond was drinking with M, and Mr. Bond was proffered some Olorosa Sherry. Bond commented on the particular vintage of the Sherry, to which M responded that Sherry was non-vintage and did not have a vintage. Of course, Mr. Bond explained that he was referring to the, the vintage of the base wine and the Solera system used to create Olorosa Sherry. Specifically, he stated, 1851, unmistakable. It's been very fun to look back and see all the different situations in which Mr. Bond ordered wine and champagne in the movies and the books, and also to get a sense for the quality of those wines and the appropriateness of both the wines and the serving temperature. I hope that you enjoyed it as well. If you enjoyed it, please smash that like button and please subscribe to my channel. I come out with videos like this approximately once a week. Until then, drink well.